How did Resident Evil 5 manage to become the number one selling game in the Resident Evil franchise? Better yet, it's the second best selling Capcom game of all time right behind Street Fighter 2. I don't think that it's hard to figure out, but the name will sell itself. I'm not a fan of this game because I'm a classic Resident Evil fan. How did you go from searching a creepy mansion and roaming the halls of a zombie infested police station to battling people infected by parasites in Africa during the brightest time of day? It's daylight. What happened to the atmosphere of Resident Evil? This completely took me out of the game at the very beginning, and I actually got this game when it released in 2009. I was super excited, but when that first cutscene came through, I kept thinking, okay, it's daylight, not a big deal, but no. Majority of the game takes place in broad daylight. The story, however, stays true to the original events of Resident Evil as Chris Redfield makes his return to the series. Chris first appeared in Resident Evil 1 and is now a member of the fictional Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance. Wow. Say that five times. He is joined in this game by Sheva, a new character to the franchise. The mission they are on is to stop Ricardo Irving before he can sell a bio-organic weapon under the table. That's when they take things in an alternate route. Sheva is now his new sidekick since we are to believe Jill Valentine is dead. RE5 is a third-person shooter and Capcom introduces its new co-op feature. Players have the option to have a friend tag along and control Sheva. If that's not your thing, don't worry, the AI will control her, and truthfully, to me, I didn't think she was much of a burden. She doesn't really get in your way. However, Resident Evil 5's 2007 E3 trailer was criticized by many who saw a white main character killing a lot of black enemies. Many still think to this day Sheva was only added to shut down any racism claims. It's not a terrible game, as a matter of fact it looks really good and plays very well. It's just not Resident Evil. This game is action packed and became very distant to survival horror. If I wanted to play a game like this I'd just play Gears of War. I just feel that it's a Gears of War knockoff. After the release of RE5, Capcom had said, looking at the marketing data for survival horror, the market is small, compared to number of units action games sell. They also went on to say, a survival horror Resident Evil doesn't seem like it'd be able to sell those kinds of numbers. Now, obviously, we all know that sales are number one priority, but you have to make your fan base happy. RE5 and RE6 sold very well because of the name, but don't hold a very good reputation with the fan base. And after a while, people are going to realize that the series isn't what it used to be. So thankfully, they got back on track with Resident Evil 7, which was amazing, and with the RE2 remake, I don't see Capcom straying far again from what they once knew. So to put a bow on RE5, it will always be a disappointment to me. And that's my opinion, but if you like it, cool. I actually like the story, all the way to finishing off Wesker. However, I wouldn't have had Sheva do it, though. That belongs to Jill. Hand Jill the rocket launcher and give the fans the proper finish. Seeing that Sheva never returns to the franchise after 5, this just seems empty. Anyway, Chris is jacked to the gills and is punching freaking boulders now, and I think we all can agree it's a good game, but too much action, not enough horror.